you know that we love fire. Even better, we love throwing fire. Now flamethrowers are nothing new, and people have been known to throw fire since the ancient times. In fact, the Greeks had used it at sea possibly as far back as 673. Back then, it was a device consisting of a hand pump that shot bursts of Greek fire using a siphon tube and a piston and ignited it with a match. Fast forward 1300 years and here I am with propane, a mini saber, and cornstarch. Curious? Let's go. The flamethrower I want to build today though, I want it to be our most powerful and our most practical one. And I want it to be relatively safe for us to use in special effects. Let's see what we have here. Now, if you've seen our Mandalorian flamethrower episode, you know we used cornstarch and propane for the flamethrower. And we did this as this gave us a huge flame that was bright orange and relatively safe compared to liquid flamethrowers. So I kind of want to do the same thing. Since we're going to be using this for practical effects, I want to make sure it's easy to refill, easy to use, and relatively safe to operate. First up, we have some empty dry chemical fire extinguishers. Now I know what you're thinking. We're going to use a fire extinguisher as a flamethrower? Yes, we are. Here's a cool thing with fire extinguishers. These are meant to disperse a powder, basically baking soda. You pressurize one of these tanks, you see there's a hose right here, and when this lever gets pressed, that causes the pressure to push the powder out and through the nozzle. That's exactly what we want to do. But instead of using baking soda, we're going to be using cornstarch. Now cornstarch is pretty cool because normally it's not flammable unless it's well dispersed in air. Watch this. Um, I wouldn't stand there if I were you. I'd uh, move over a little. Ready? Yeah. That didn't work. Damn it. I'm just getting covered in cornstarch. Hey Dylan, do you ever have two apples? Uh, for a test? No, but I don't, sorry. For like any kind of like fruit that we can light on fire? A cantaloupe? For... That might work. Take a look at this cantaloupe, for example. Let's say it accidentally gets some cornstarch on it while it's playing with fire, right? Look at my hands, completely covered. Couldn't be good at all, right? But look, cornstarch doesn't burn normally. So even though this cantaloupe is completely covered in flammable cornstarch, it's not on fire. It's actually pretty safe. Let's compare that to gasoline. Safety first. This is not a uh, flamethrower yet. Now let's say we use gasoline for our flamethrower, which is pretty common for, uh, for flamethrowers nowadays. Imagine that, uh, that you're this cantaloupe and you get some gasoline on you. Well, here's the thing. You're gonna have a pretty bad day. See, that cantaloupe, uh, that, that is not a happy cantaloupe. The, uh, the cornstarch cantaloupe was a much, much happier cantaloupe. Yeah, as you can see, this is, uh, this is a pretty bad day for him. I guess just wait for this to burn out. <laughs> now that we know how much safer cornstarch is than gasoline, let me show you how it does ignite. There you go. So if it's well dispersed, we can get cornstarch to catch on fire which is what we're gonna be doing. This is a tank we used for our Mandalorian flamethrower and it lasts about three to five seconds of fire. But I wanna go bigger. So I got this one instead, which is significantly bigger and should give us a lot more fire for a lot longer. To pressurize our fire extinguisher with its cornstarch, we're gonna use a flammable gas. The flammable gas not only allows us to get the system pressure we need, but it also helps with ignition when the flame is still dispersing. In our Mandalorian flamethrower, we use propane, but for this one, I think I'm gonna go with matte gas because I like the color combination. So we know we're using cornstarch as our fuel, we're using matte gas as our pressurizer, and we're using an old fire extinguisher as a storage tank. Now we just need some fittings to put this all together. All right, we have a lot of fittings. What do we want? Got a couple of different sizes of nozzle, some tubing to connect all this, some couplers probably too. Now I want a nice big valve so we have a large passageway and it doesn't get clogged up with cornstarch. Imagine if we have something like this on top and you can just like close it and you can open it, put a whole bunch of cornstarch in there, close it again, fire it. For now this will do. I want to make it so that this thing is always open. That way we can pressurize it and then use our own valve to get the most flow out of this as possible. 
Let's start by taking it apart. Basically, I want to remove these two handles first. See if we can get rid of that valve. All right, there we go. So we have this valve here, and that valve is not going to get us as much flow as we want. So I want to get rid of it. So I can't weld onto this. What can I do? And uh, here's this valve that we're trying to remove. See so if we can get that valve out. It does not want to go out. There we go. That's a good start. Okay, so we have the entire valve completely disassembled, and this is made out of brass, so we can't weld to it. But what we can do is we can tap this to an NPT thread so we can screw this into it, or this one here. And that way we can attach this valve, we can attach whatever hosing we want to it, we can attach our nozzle, and then have the front of the flamethrower all completed. Why is this still here? All right, so I got a whole bunch of different fittings and I think I've come up with a design that'll work quite well. Now, I wanna include a big valve at the top for easy filling of the entire system. But if I put that awkwardly off to the side or on the bottom, that won't be the case. So instead, I'm gonna attach it straight to the middle and I'm gonna replace the old valve completely. Here's what I'm planning to do. I've got this T-fitting, which the big valve can bolt into. We can weld that T-fitting on top of this cylinder so for this fitting here, we can plumb a 90 degree connector with a big piece of steel as the siphon tube that goes out the front to which we can connect our main valve and our nozzle. So that's what it'll look like. And basically what that'll mean is we can open this, put cornstarch right in there, close this, pressurize the system, and then we can open this main valve here to let all the cornstarch out really quickly. So for our siphon tube, we're gonna use this 90 welded to this eighth inch coupler so that we can have the rest of the hosing go on just like that. And that should go quite well with our valve. That should all be able to join up. Let's go weld these. Clean this edge up. Ready for some welding. Look at that weld. That should be a perfect flamethrower weld. That's the first part of this. Part number two is gonna be that piece of steel that we just got. That's one piece welded. Let's figure out how long this tube is. If this is sitting on here, we need the length of this 313 millimeters from there. If we do that, that should give us a perfect center exit. We're trying to replicate this piece right here. So it's got a little notch there, and it's about that long. Go make it. Like that. And then let's bring it back over there and do that notch. So, gotta clean this edge up, and we're ready to weld. Now we can weld this piece into here like that and that means that our cortex can go in this way and out that way okay so i want that to sit right there so let's weld it into place one there we go that will hopefully hold now the next step is this is going to be welded like that but we have to make that hole a little bit bigger so we're going to cut off that entire piece off the top Check out our pressure chamber. So, cornstarch goes in there, cornstarch comes out of there. Just gotta weld it up. All right, let's clean this up and see how it turned out. That's what we got. Jimmy, I'm really worried about those welds. I don't know if there's gonna be any leaks there or not. Okay, so I'm gonna try to attach this right there as a pressurization line. So our pressure will go in here and force the cornstarch out of here. All right, I have no clue if I can drill this cast iron here. Oh yeah, no problem there. There 
it is. There's all of our fittings welded together. All right, let's put it together. We should have just about everything we need. First up, we're gonna need, or I also got a gauge, and it goes up to 160. We need to hook this guy up into here, and this needs to go like that. Got this hose for it. So uh, at what point in history did they uh, make a plane throw like this, buddy? Well, uh, you see, fire was one of the most important inventions in human history, as it allowed people to uh, cook food, therefore getting more nutrition out of it, uh, giving them more time to, instead of making food. So when the cavemen invented fire, they also invented the flamethrower. Of course. Ah, yeah. cool. So, got my Teflon tape, got all my fittings, let's put this together. Got a gauge installed. Got our fill valve installed. Time to install our two smaller valves. And now we got a way to add pressure. Pressure off. Fill on, fill off. Finally, it's out our nozzle. So, with these, all three of these closed, we should be able to pressurize the system and have it not explode. Hacksmith Industries is full of curious minds. And uh, every time we see something cool, we think, how can I make that? And if you have a curious mind too, you should definitely check out Engineering That Build the World on the History Channel. Each episode takes an in-depth look at defining moments of innovation, like the Golden Gate Bridge, the Statue of Liberty, and the Hoover Dam. Iconic structures that have both shaped and defined our world. It's the ultimate story of man versus nature. Our connector is done, let's go pressure test it. So we're gonna pressurize it through the outlet. So this is usually where the flamethrower will come out. But right now we're putting air in there because it's most convenient. And we're gonna get it up to about 120, 140 PSI, which should be more than enough for propane. And then we're gonna make sure that there's no leaks. If there's no leaks, nothing explodes and everything's working well, we can go on to testing the propane. Oh, and we have leaks everywhere. Yeah. Look at all the bubbles. Uh, we can go over the welds again and see if that'll help. I redid some of the Teflon tape and changed out the ball valve at the top. Everything seems to be airtight now, but we still need to do a pressure test. Let's do it. Should be good for a pressure check. Let's start pressurizing. Seems pretty good. No booms yet. We're good, no leaks. It's holding 120 PSI, no problem. All right, here's what we need next. Got this, we need a proper nozzle on this. So let's upgrade that now. It's gonna add this nozzle basically right there. All right, let's hook up the propane. I think I wanna peel these stickers off first before we attach anything else to it. Now this should be able to go on. Okay, there we go, there's our propane feed line. We can wrap that around now, just like this. I think we should uh, try to strap this on first. I think we're basically ready to go. Really? Is yeah. it ready for a test? No, down to waste. Let's go test it. All right, we got our test dummy here. Let's see if we can not make some fried cantaloupe. So this should not catch fire and ignite for a while. Hopefully, if we get cornstarch on it, it won't burn very long. Because as soon as the cornstarch sticks to it, it'll stop burning because there's not enough uh, dispersion. It's a safe flamethrower. For now. Sweet, we're pressurizing. You guys ready? Let's fill it up with cornstarch. Watch, look how much easier this is to fill than the old one. We're gonna need a lot more cornstarch. Okay, and let's close this. Anyway, full, full take, 80 PSI. So this is no flame, just uh, cornstarch. Okay, should we try that? James ready? Ready. So I've been ready? I'm ready. Woo One more? Again. Oh my god. Best flame forever! Let's do a few more, few more fires. Oh, oh perfect. Oh, no, don't use a nice one. This one's not nice, the skin fell off. Oh, okay, I guess. Oh okay, this is a terrible idea. Alright, we got our chicken on a stick. Yeah. Ah! 
Hey, it's on fire, move. Hey, oh, we're, not, hey, we're, we're not, hey, we're not done. Oh. That was my lunch. <laughs> Oh, don't. Mm. Oh, man. Those were my favorite tongs. What, what are you doing? What's this? Well, see, the cornstarch is not flammable on our uh, cantaloupe, so I'm going to make it more flammable. Uh, do not try this at home. Perfect. Ready? Yeah. All right, a little closer. There we go. Woo! All right. Oh, I just did it. So safe, it works as a fire extinguisher. Well, I don't know about you, but I would call that a success. That was a huge success. Okay, I'm really happy with how this thing works, but it's not too comfortable to hold it at the moment, and uh, it doesn't have enough stickers, and we still need to attach the mini saber to it so you can operate it with one person. Would you be able to let Vinyl cut us some stickers? All right, Tyler, um, I'd like you to make us something like this, I guess. What's wrong? Danger, flamethrower. Yeah? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do a proper nice, nice sticker. White background, black, um, oh sorry, then do the, the red, then the yellow, then the black. Cool, let's go ahead and handle it this while Tyler does that. Okay, so we know we want to have our mini saber sitting somewhere about there to light the torch. Hacksmith mini sabers are back in stock now, so make sure to get yours at hacksmith.store. So what I'm thinking is we're going to add some kind of plate between here and here. That'll allow us to basically have this there. And then we can basically use that as our main handle. So we can hold it like this, right? And then we can use the other hand to open and close the flamethrower. So let's see what we, let's see what we can find. Something like this would probably work. Okay, these guys. This can mount right there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do to make this removable is I'm gonna use these nuts. I'm gonna cut them in half so that they fit right around this pipe. And then we'll use a hose clamp to tighten on the handle. And that'll make sure that if we need to remove uh, our mini saber or if we need to take this back apart, we can do so easily. Tacked together right now. We're gonna go attach to the flamethrower, make sure it's all straight. So then all we have to do is put this through the middle. That should sit nicely right there. And then we can use these hose clamps. Okay, that is way easier to hold now. Kind of. We might need, we might need some modifications here, but. Nicely in the way. I think that'll work. Let's do that. Okay, so if we put it like right there, that should not only allow you to hold it pretty nicely, but also fairly easily access the switch to turn on the igniter. Let's do that. Let's, uh, let's put this thing together. Three, two, one. Oh. There we go, it's done. Oh my god. Look at it, check it out. I can actually pick it up with one hand now. Oh, that looks awesome. Now, Owen made a really good suggestion to use this valve and make it into a little turn handle. So instead of pulling it back like this, it was kind of like a bike throttle. So theoretically, if we can replace this and I weld the tube onto it, that's all it should take. All right, I've chopped off the end of that lever and welded it onto a steel tube to make a nice grip. So now this will be like a throttle to control your flamethrower. I'm just gonna add some uh, grip tape to it. Should just be able to put it on there and then bolt it in place. On, off. Hell yeah. Oh, nice. Try to get some flame throwing done. Oh, hey, Tyler. Ooh, perfect. Check that out. Ooh, thanks, Tyler. Time to add the finishing touches. Ooh. Clear and simple sticker. Danger, flamethrower. And there we go. After a full day of building, we have the most powerful and the most practical flamethrower in the history of the Hacksmith channel. So this calls for a final test. Ooh, let's do it.
cannot wait to test out this final flamethrower. Got the flamethrower, got some cornstarch, let's fill it up. Let's open up our ball valve. That's a lot of cornstarch. A lot of cornstarch. Sealed. All right, pressure time. The main uh, ball valve is closed, the throttle valve is closed. Now we just need to open this valve here to pressurize the system. All right, ready? Yep. All right, 90 PSI. We're at pressure. Okay, time for fire. That is awesome. Sweet! Yeah, ready? Ha -ha! <laughs> this thing is amazing. This is definitely the best flamethrower we've ever built. Thank you for watching, and make sure to check out Engineering That Build the World on the History Channel. I'll see you in the next one. I think I found the downside of this flamethrower. Makes a mess, <laughs> yeah.